Okay, we're going to keep reading Ghostbusters. We're up to chapter six. Patty led Erin, Abby and Holtzman into the subway and down the tunnel where she'd seen the ghost. Abby used the PKE meter while Holtzman pushed a large clunky proton box on wheels. You know, the old York prison used to be right there above us, Patty said. I always knew there was something weird down here. Abby checked her meter. Strong correlation between negative incidents and paranormal precedents. It's very difficult for anything to pass through the barrier into our world. Abby twisted a few dials, then went on. So any spirit determined enough to pull that off, well, that's likely to ang likely an angry ghost. Patty noticed a graffiti artist ahead. Hey, what did I say? He pretended to spray his armpits. That is not deodorant. Have you again mistaken me for a stupid person? Patty shook a fist at him. Is he down here a lot? Abby asked. This is his art studio, she said. Abby called to the artist. Have you seen a class four semi-anchored entity around here? Patty whispered. You might want to try English. Erin asked. Have you seen a ghost? The graffiti artist replied. Yeah, I've seen a ghost. Can you describe it? Erin asked. The graffiti artist thought about it for a minute, then started to draw an outline of a ghost on the subway wall. Don't you draw a ghost on my on that wall, Patty warned. He stopped, then he spray painted a little more. I mean it, Patty said as he put the finishing touches on his art. I don't want that ghost up there. He drew a circle with a line through it over the ghost. Patty ran forward and grabbed the spray paint from his hand. The artist ran away and Patty fumed. Meanwhile, Holtzman peeked back at the graffiti on the wall. What remained was a spray-painted outline of a ghost in a red circle with a line through it. Mm. Wonder what that might be. Holtzman snapped a shot of the artist's image with her phone and then ran to catch up with the others who had left to find the ghost further down. Abby used her PKE meter and EMF meter. Don't do that, please, Owen and Jesse. We don't have much time, Paddy told them. No one touched the third rail. A drip of green slime fell from the ceiling onto Erin's shoulder. Oh, come on, I just dry cleaned this, she said. Yeah, I figured you were going gonna get your fancy clothes dirty down here. I should have given you some coveralls. My bad, Paddy said. Abby called them all together. We got something going on over here. Is that a burn mark? That's where I saw the weird sparkling thing, Paddy pointed at the wall, where a strange box had been mounted. What was it? Holtzman asked. Darling, if I knew, I wouldn't have said that weird sparkling thing. <laughs> Abby began collecting samples from all around the area. She found a large chunk of debris, smells of both electrical discharge and isotopic decay. She handed it <coughs> over to Holtzman. Achoo, Holtz, smell this. You agree? Holtzman smelled it and then licked it. Definite neutron burn. <clears throat> Patty was repulsed. All right, if you're all done kissing that piece of dirty garbage, we only have a few minutes, for real. I gave us no cushion room. Just then, the lights in the tunnel flickered and went out. Holtzman pointed down the tunnel. Did you see that? The eyes. Erin sighed. Another prank. Holtzman, please don't mess. Oh, there was something down there in the dark. It looked like a pair of glowing yellow eyes. That is unsettling. Holtzman, illuminate the subject, Abby ordered. Yeah, get some light on that, Paddy agreed while getting ready to run. Holtzman shone the flashlight down the tunnel, revealing the ghost. He was the tall, thin, pale prisoner ghost Paddy had seen before. His yellow eyes flashed at them. The PKE meter's antenna started spinning wildly. Erin noted the meter. That is somehow more unsettling. And fantastic. That's another class four, but way more ionized than the Aldridge ghost. Look at the meter. I've got to get this on film. Abby grabbed the camera. Let's bring this boy to the lab. Holtz, power up. Abby started filming. This is early stages, so it's a little rough. I'm going to adjust the levels. Erin, hold this. Holtzman handed Erin a large, a large cumbersome wand. It was attached to a tube that attached to a box. This will shoot a proton stream, so aim just aim it at the ghost when I say, oh, I almost forgot. She put a contraption that looked like a metal neck brace around Erin's neck and connected it with a wire to the machine. Just a little bit of grounding. 
Holtzman confirmed that Erin was ready. Okay, don't move too much or talk and definitely don't sweat. <laughs> Aaron stood frozen like a robot while Holtzman fiddled with the switches on the proton box. Holtzman, Aaron muttered between closed lips. The ghost was getting closer. Aim the wand at it, Abby told Aaron. She did, but only a weak beam shot out. Well, that's underwhelming. Use more power. Holtzman adjusted the settings. Okay, Aaron, do it again. She aimed the wand again and the beam went a little farther. It touched the ghost, but just barely. Erin was dripping sweat. Can I, can this get stronger, please? Holtzman tried a few things. Not at the moment. Live, live and learn, I guess. I wish I had time to run back to the lab, she asked Erin. You couldn't hold that for a while, could you? No! The beam from Erin's hand wand was holding the ghost, who was now only two feet in front of her. Think you could just slowly drag it back to the lab like this? Holtzman suggested. No! The ghost suddenly pushed forward against the beam. Erin fell backward onto the tunnel floor but managed to hold on. Lights in the distance made Paddy shriek. That's the train! We've got to move! We are not losing this thing, Abby said. Erin, drag the ghost back to the platform. What? Erin could barely speak. There's no time. Grab her sides. Paddy took hold of the back of Erin's collar like a kitten and lifted her as Holtzman and Abby helped. The train got closer. That's express. It's not stopping, Paddy warned. They pulled Erin up onto the platform just in time, but the proton box was still on the track. Holtzman ripped the attached metal collar off Erin's neck seconds before the train's impact slammed the box into the third rail, causing electricity to surge up through the tube. The ghost was captured for a second until a surge of electricity hit him, sending ectoplasm splattering. Erin was covered. Abby and Holtzman glanced up in time to see the ghost to see the ghost in the back of the subway car looking confused as it sped away. Guess he's going to Queens, Paddy said calmly. Did you see that? Abby nearly, nearly screamed. That surge of power really got a hold of it. What a field test. Data-tastic. Holtzman was taking notes. Yep, we're going to need a lot more juice. We need to be more mobile too. I know what to do. We almost got killed, Aaron choked choked out. She was covered in ectoplasm. Yeah, I know. Holtzman was thrilled. So awesome. No one looked into that flash, right? Erin gasped. I looked directly into it. Oh, that's fine, Holtzman said. But she made a face at Abby that mouthed, yikes. Chapter 7. Back at headquarters, Erin watched the subway video that Abby had posted. All the comments were pretty much the same. Fake. You people are crazy. Erin couldn't believe it. What do people want? She turned to Abby. We really need to get a ghost back to the lab and document it properly. This stuff's all real and we can't prove it to anybody. We will. Abby was confident. You just got to ignore these people. Kevin brought Abby a cup of coffee. Do you remember the sugar? He, she asked. Kevin wasn't sure. So he, he took a long, so he took a long sip, then gave the cup to Abby. Yeah. He walked away. Well, at least he remembered, Abby said, setting the cup aside. What do you make of the tech from the subway? Erin asked as they studied the leftover parts from the sparking device on the table. I've only got bits and pieces here, none of which have any business in a subway tunnel. But look at this. Abby held up a piece. Was it that a miniature cyclotron? Erin asked. Yep. Abby confirmed. Everything I'm looking at here, they're all things we've associated with attracting ghost particles. I'm wondering if someone built some kind of device to bring in an apparition, which is very impressive. Erin glanced at Patty, who was sitting at a computer in the office typing madly. What was that weird thing that guy mentioned? The fourth cataclysm, Patty replied, sounded like some spooky ancient stuff, but I can't find anything about it online. She shook her head. Do I need to worry about, about first through third cataclysms? Who's got that kind of time? Abby and Erin looked at each other, then back at Patty. Ma'am, why are you still here? Erin asked. Oh, I'm joining your club, Patty said, as if it was totally obvious. The phone rang. Kevin looked at Erin before answering. What is this place called again? Conductors of the Metaphysical Examination, Erin said, proud of the name. Kevin answered the phone. Conductors of Meta something or other. <laughs> hey, Kevin, Abby interrupted. I'm going to need you to try a little harder, okay, buddy? 
Kevin, put down the receiver. Okay, if they call back, I will. Abby smiled. There you go. I've got to take off, though. I've got a hide-and-seek tournament. <laughs> We're in the semis. Kevin started gathering his stuff. Abby didn't have to look at Erin to know her face was disapproving. Erin turned back to Paddy. Paddy, this isn't really a club. We're a research group. Do you have any lab experience? No, and I kind of feel like I was set up to fail with that question. No, I am not a scientist. I understand that, Paddy went on. I didn't go to some fancy school like the rest of you, but I read a lot of non-fiction. You know, you can be smart about science, but a straight-up dummy about everything else. <clears throat> she calmed down. I guess I didn't need to insult you. I apologise for that. She took a breath. Look, I spend most of my time sitting alone in an MTA booth. I thought it would be nice to pick up an activity that involves other people. She added, I also, I could borrow a car from my uncle so you don't have to keep lugging all that heavy equipment around. That last point, they couldn't refuse. Great! Welcome to the team, Paddy, Abby said for them all. The next morning, there was a loud honking on the street in front of the restaurant. Abby, Erin and Holtzman came out the front door to find Patty getting out of her uncle's hearse. Oh, sweet, Holtzman cheered. You did not disclose this automobile was a hearse, Abby said, circling Patty and the car. Patty was insulted. My uncle owns a funeral home. Would you rather take the subway? What's the difference? We work with the dead anyway. Meanwhile, Rowan walked down the narrow hallways of the Mikado, swinging an electric device in his hands. A door at the end of the hall opened, and an older woman, Mrs. Potter, stood there in a bathrobe. Excuse me, maintenance man, Mrs. Potter called out. Mrs. Potter, thank you for using my preferred title, Rowan said, dripping sarcasm. How may I help you? Well, for starters, you could tell me what this is. She pointed to the doorframe where green slime was oozing down the wall. Isn't that something? Must be leakage from the air conditioning, Rowan said with a small grin. I'll take care of it immediately. I think it must have touched my skin. It's given me a rash. She pulled up the back of her blouse and showed her back to Rowan. Does this look red to you? Rowan discovered that a small ghostly creature was living inside Mrs. Potter. It gnashed its teeth and tried to claw its way out through her back. Well, he took a closer look, then told her calmly, I was going to say no, but you know what? Yep, it's a little red. Right in this area here. Does it look bad? No, not at all, but just in case, I'll send up some cream. His smile turned sinister as he walked quickly down to the basement. Once alone, Rowan took off his jacket and hung it carefully behind the door. Before getting to work, Rowan looked into... Rowan looked into a, the large mirror reflecting the ghost world and said, I know everyone is anxious, but we must be patient. The guests are starting to complain. We don't want any spoilers before the big show.